Hi, I'm Dustin. I'm Anna. And we are not qualified to investigate the paranormal, but we might be more qualified than... John C. Riley. Mm, I had no idea if he's interested in the paranormal. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. We're here to talk about a paranormal tale and then talk about some of the other causes for it other than paranormal causes. Possible explanations. Possible explanations. You always have the right words to share. So I'm going to dive right into this one. We're going to be talking about a haunted place today. Mm. So last time, or I guess depending on which order you listen to these in, uh, we we talked about a cryptid. Now we're talking about an actual place that is known to be haunted or reported to be haunted numerous times over a century at this point. Mm. So we're going to start kind of in the middle and you'll see why in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and start this story. Tell me a story. The year was 1974. Steve was on his way to a resort nestled in the mountains of Colorado for some much-deserved alone time with his wife. He had been working on a TV series filming on location in Colorado, and the remote resort they were heading to was just what he needed to relax. They had also decided to leave their son with a nanny in order to reconnect and spend some quality time with just the two of them. Hmm, Steve mused as they pulled in. I guess we're one of the first guests to check in. He had noticed that they were one of the only cars in the parking lot of the resort. As he approached the reception desk, he was greeted warmly by the hotel's clerk, Janet. We gotta know her name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good evening, sir, and welcome. How can I help you? Janet asked with a smile. Hi, I have a reservation for me and my wife, he replied. Janet quickly found his reservation, probably because there was nobody else at the hotel. Uh... <laughs> but hesitated as she handed him the room key. You're in room 217, sir. I hope you enjoy your stay with us. <laughs> Did she ask it like a question? <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is the 70s. Uh, we don't know. There's, there's, there's no, there's nothing that's like okay. the inflection was. That was okay. So you're, yeah. you're adding that inflection. Yeah. No, I'm okay. sorry. Yeah. Again, once again, some these are going to be dramatized a little bit. Uh, obviously, I'm adding sound effects in. I'm adding some spooky music, because when you go and you watch those YouTube channels, that's exactly what they do. Mm -hmm. So we're doing it here too. We want to set this. Mo we want to set this mood. Yeah. We want to make sure that we're, you know, that we're we're doing the story justice. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to feel that. Okay. Well, <laughs> you're going to. Okay. Great. Thank you, Steve responded. Is everything okay? He asked the clerk. She smiled back and said, Yes, sir. I was just making sure that the room number was the right one. But if you have any issues, don't hesitate to ask for a change in rooms, uh, as you and your wife are the only ones staying with us tonight. Really? Okay, is the hotel restaurant bar going to be open? My wife and I were planning on eating here tonight. He's so stuffy. <laughs> He's a little stuffy. <laughs> Sensing Steve's surprise, Janet quickly replied, Oh, yes, sir. We're fully staffed. We're just getting ready to close up before the winter. There's a storm coming tonight, but no snow is projected. I just wanted to let you know in case there were any, uh, issues with your room. Steve thought that this whole thing was a little strange, but shrugged it off and he and his wife headed to their room. Once inside, they unpacked their suitcases and headed down to the hotel's restaurant for some dinner and drinks. After quite a few libations and a great dinner, they headed back up to the room to get some rest for the day ahead. The novelty of being the only guest in the hotel actually started to relax them a little bit, and the drinks... <laughs> and the drinks helped. <laughs> the drinks were flowing. And the drinks were flowing. It's such a weird... I can't... I, can't, I, can't, I never had anything like that happen. <laughs> Where you showed up and you were the people. only people? Yeah. At like well, a large resort. this hotel? It's huge. Uh -huh. We'll get into that. But... Uh, a little, I'll say at this point in its history, a little dilapidated. It's, it's it, it was built a really long time ago. I said it's been over a century. It's built a really long time ago. Mm -hmm. So anyway, sorry, I gave you some clues. But anyway, here we go. Okay. But as night fell, he started to feel a little anxious and was disturbed by the sound of the howling wind outside of his room's window. His wife had already fallen asleep, and he decided to try and lay down next to her and give sleep another chance. 
But Steve tossed and turned, still unable to find peaceful sleep. In the midst of his restlessness, he noticed light coming in from the hallway under his door and thought that if he could just turn that light off, that maybe he could finally get some rest. Steve got up and walked into the hallway to see if the light could be turned off. But when he opened the door, he found that the light was already off. As he stood in the hallway, perplexed, he began to hear the sound of water rushing, echoing through the empty halls. Suddenly, he heard a voice crying out for help. It almost sounded like his son's voice, but he knew this was impossible as their son was not with them on this trip. Dad, help me, please! It's chasing me! The voice screamed. That's scary. Yeah, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Okay, it's getting spooky. We're setting the tone. Everything's, yeah, we're, we're doing the thing. Steve began to run through the hallways, desperately searching for a child who might need his help. As he turned the corner, his terror was confirmed. He saw his son being pursued by someone chasing him with a fire hose that was mounted at the end of the wall. Only, there was no one holding it. It was moving by itself. Its brass nozzle seemed to be snapping at the boy's heels like a ravenous beast. I'm coming, Steve shouted, trying to close the distance between them. As he ran, the fire hose seemed to multiply, surrounding him and his son, trapping them in a maze of twisting, hissing hoses. Suddenly, Steve woke up in his bed next to his wife, covered in sweat. His heart was pounding, and he looked over at his wife, who was sleeping peacefully beside him. He shakingly reached for the pack of cigarettes on his nightstand and lit one up to try to calm down. Staring out the window at the cold, blustery night, Steve was beginning to settle down and had a thought. What a great story this would make. By the time Steve had finished his cigarette, he had outlined his next novel. He went back to bed, and the remainder of his stay was peaceful, and gave him just the inspiration and rest he needed. I know who this is. This is, of course... Stephen King. And the novel... This is the Shining. I the was going to ask you that if he this got. Is the, yep, the, this is it. Okay. This okay. is where Stephen King stayed while he was filming the TV series for The Stand. Okay. And he got... Wait, was it The Stand? This, Maybe it was something else. Sorry. I should probably know been, that better. Uh, I'll look it up. I'll look it okay. up and I'll, I'll come back and edit this part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll do a little jump in here. Right here. Hey everyone, Dustin from the future popping in here to correct myself. Stephen King was not filming anything or writing anything for TV at the time. This just goes to show you that you need to double check all of your references. Okay, welcome back. Um, so, yes, this is Stephen King, uh -huh. 1974. Mm -hmm. This is the Stanley Hotel in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Has an incredibly interesting past. Mm -hmm. And at this point in the hotel's history, it was kind of falling apart. And after this incident happened and Stephen King wrote the novel, it kind of helped the hotel... And they did renovations, mm -hmm. and it's still going today. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I think Kevin Nealon is playing there next weekend. Wow, well, yeah, and people take haunted tours. and They have haunted yeah. ghost tours. They, they kind of embraced the idea of having a haunted hotel. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a big history here, but I kind of want to get your, uh, your take on here. Because Stephen King is not the only person, first of all, in this particular room mm -hmm. to have a nightmare. Uh, well, it's a nightmare, huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think the overall ambiance of the of the hotel is just kind of a it's it's fall, falling apart. But mm -hmm. the overall ambiance kind of gave him this initial push and an initial you know might have set the tone. Now the the rest of the story kind of goes that Stephen King you know would go down to the bar every night. He's the only one in the bar. Talk to the bartender alone, and that's like the scene that you see in The Shining, mm -hmm. where Jack's talking to the ghost bartender. But the bartender was the one who told him all the stories of the, all the ghost stories, because uh -huh. there was no ghost to her at that point. Yeah. Oh, it's so, gonna be so hard for me to be objective on this one. Yeah, I know, because <laughs> so, we all saw it as kids, it's, and yeah, yeah, it's so embedded. It it mm -hmm. right, but I think that's kind of that's one of the one of the main themes, mm -hmm. right? And we always get into these themes. But anyway, so initial thoughts on I guess places that make us make some of us so uncomfortable that we actually it's like maybe somewhat in our subconscious and we have nightmares is is there such a phenomena do we know of anything like that oh. where our context induces distressing dreams that um, sounds great that yeah sounds, that, that sounds, sounds very <laughs> psychological let's go with that yeah i don't i mean i don't know that it's a we don't there's so much a mystery about 
our dreams and why we dream in the first place. We don't even know for sure if it serves a psychological function But one of the theories of dreaming is it's a consolidation of memories, it's kind of a clearing out of the brain's files, and another theory of memories is more of the kind of psychoanalytic one, that they have meaning. Right. Um, And then... If it's a crab chasing you, then that means that the crab is actually your mother. Sure. And she was overbearing. Sure. And I had no, there's, you know, library of, or encyclopedia of interpretations of dreams that are not just Western interpretations, but Eastern and everything in between. So that's one school of thought. And then there's the, it's just random that some of the more brain analysis looks at when people are, when people are sleeping and then they report dreaming, if they're in REM sleep, that the parts of the brain that are active are really not the most, what we might call meaningful parts, that it's like your visual cortex and, and then maybe subcortical regions. So it's going to give you content to see, but it's not connected to the parts of your brain that more associated with memory and personality. So there's really not a ton of what we would call meaning if your higher consciousness or your um, narrative memories aren't a part of it. But that doesn't really provide evidence for them, people who have trauma-related dreams, like about things they've really been through. That provides a little more evidence for the consolidation of memories and we need to right. dream to process things. I don't think that Stephen King's son was actually chased by a phantom fire hose right. at some point. Right. But I will say that <laughs> maybe, maybe, um, but, you know, yeah. as far as serving a purpose, uh-huh. uh, Stephen King made millions of dollars on The Shining alone uh-huh. um, throughout all the franchises that it, it produced. Uh-huh. And, you know, thinking like if you think about artists who have kind of like like john lennon from the beatles Mm -hmm. you know had the dream about the man on the flaming pie who said uh there will be beatles with an a and there are Mm -hmm. and that's how he came up with the name the beatles like all these like very chicken or egg kind of okay Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. they were all they were probably doing lots of everybody was smoking pot and doing cocaine and drinking a lot (sighs) Stephen King was struggling with alcohol at this point too. Like that's yeah. and that's one thing he writes into his character in sure. the in the thing. So like he mm-hmm. when when I say they drank a lot, I'm guessing they drank a lot, like a lot. A <laughs> like lot. he had a lot that he night. He had a lot that night. Yeah. So your question though is Yeah, sorry, back to my question. About do could a could a place induce a dream? A distressing like a nightmare. Yeah. 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 And I mean any it, 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 sh- th- yeah, theoretically our daytime experiences influence could influence what we dream about at night yeah Yeah. ask anyone who's had a a trauma related dream right and i think for me i've been put into i'm trying to think of how i can say this correctly i've been put into some situations where i have been made to sit in a room that i'm fairly sure was designed to make me uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and i it might sound very mysterious but i I think my my point is is that like i kind of get the feeling that that was something that was manufactured but sometimes buildings just kind of naturally after a while kind of take on that look or feel or whatever and and subconsciously they make us nervous or they make you know the color of the carpet mi- mixed with the color of the walls make us ner- for some reason it just like sets something off oh, in yeah. people mm-hmm. is kind of what i'm getting at there or just gives you a general sense of unease and mm-hmm. then of course you would have those you know that would kind of set the tone mm-hmm. but again they weren't scared his wife slept fine, mm-hmm. right? So, and Stephen King is obviously a very creative, yeah, artistic yes. person. His wife's yeah. a writer too, but he yeah. is the horror genre master, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't know if he, again, it's not like he had trauma, but like maybe just an overactive imagination mixed with the the feel of being in a large hotel with only you and your wife, but like a full staff and there's howling wind outside mm-hmm. and you drink a lot. Well, <laughs> yeah, I guess we're, I mean, there's, I think, there's so much more to talk about with with this place. If there were were a hundred years of hauntings, I, yeah. Okay, I, I, I know mean, I don't, and we'll we'll probably cut some of this, I'm sure. <laughs> but um, but it sounds like he he went there not knowing anything about the history of this place, and then yeah. he had a, this really strange nightmare, and then he decided to write about this place as if it were haunted, before he even knew that it had a history of hauntings. That's a good question. I uh-huh. think he knew that it had a history. I think he knew it was an old, older place, even in the 70s. It was, you know, at that point, close to 70 years old. So okay. so I think he knew it was, it had a, uh, it had a past. He knew that there were quote unquote ghosts. Like I oh, said, okay. his, his, uh, the bartender sat there and told him the stories. I don't know if he sat there and told him that night or if that's just something like throughout yeah. his stay that he hung out with the bartender who was telling him all these stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. I'm so curious. Anyway, so with that being said, yes, there is so much more to unpack here. We will talk, have many other stories where we talk about dreams, I'm sure, uh-huh. and, and kind of that environment. But this is kind of just our first kickoff to it because yeah. this is what put this place on the map. It wasn't the original hauntings that put this place on the map. It was getting ready to go under... Again, Stephen King wrote this story. It made this place so famous Mm -hmm. that he's not the only famous person to have stayed in that room and to have been freaked out. And we'll get into that. Mm -hmm. But first, let's talk a little bit about the history. I mixed a little bit of the history in with some of the ghost stories because there's so much. There's just I can't tell you every single story that I was able to find and read about. Are we calling this place again? The Stanley Hotel. Okay, because in my mind it's the Overlook. Right, that's not its name. No, 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 that's not its name. The Overlook. I I don't think he wanted to call it that because he didn't want the place to go out of business because of him yeah you know what i mean yeah Yeah, anyway okay so we're going to start with the history uh and and also i'm throwing in the ghost stories as we go along because they kind of history kind of coincides with it the stanley hotel is a historic hotel located in estes park colorado it was built by freeland oscar stanley and opened its doors in 1909 the hotel is well known for its iconic architecture stunning views of the Rocky Mountains, and as an inspiration for Stephen King's famous novel, novel, The Shining, which we just read about. Freeland Oscar Stanley, the co-inventor of the Stanley Steamer Automobile, was diagnosed with tuberculosis in early 1900. His doctor recommended that he spend time in the clean mountain air to improve his health. Stanley Steamer was an automobile? Yeah. Okay. You want to go into the history of that? I don't <laughs> just, have that. That's, that. To me, it's a carpet cleaner, so, you know, go ahead. Stanley fell in love with the beauty of Estes Park, and he decided to go build a hotel to cater to the wealthy visitors from the East Coast. Construction of the hotel began in 1907 and was completed in 1909. The hotel was designed by Denver architect T. Robert Weiger and featured a neoclassic Georgian design. The Stanley Hotel boasted modern amenities such as electric lights, telephones, and ensuite bathrooms, which were unusual for the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Such a different time when it was like, let's go to a hotel and have a bathroom inside. Yeah. 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 Let's poop inside the night. <laughs> Fancy. The hotel quickly became a popular destination for the rich and famous. It hosted notable guests such as Theodore Roosevelt, John Philip Sousa. I don't know who that Sousa. is. Sousa. Who's that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> how do you know I mispronounced it? Because I know names sometimes. I'm okay. not even who they are, but it's Sousa. And the Emperor and Empress of Japan. I don't know which one. It doesn't say. The hotel's popularity also led to the development of Estes Park as a tourist destination and helped establish the nearby Rocky Mountain National Park in 1915. Yeah. There you go. Pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the, the builder, proprietor, the man who started it all. Stanley Steamer himself. Stanley Steamer. After Freeland passed away in 1940, many guests have reported sightings of his ghost in the hotel bar and billiard room. Children who wander off have reported that a man who fits Freeland's description helped them find their way back to their parents. When the parents go to thank this mysterious helpful stranger, they can never find him. Flora's phantom, Flora's his wife, on the other hand, is frequently spotted slash heard playing on the piano in the lobby. Mm-hmm. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah, it is neat. So these are two, and, and we'll, we'll go on, but these are two ghosts who are very helpful. Mm-hmm. Very helpful or just kind of playful. They're just running their hotel. Yeah. Freeland's drinking at the bar, playing playing pool. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if he found, finds a lost child, he helps them find their parents. That's great. Mm-hmm. I don't, you don't hear that that often. Usually ghosts are trying to steal children away to the underworld or something. And Flora's playing the piano for everybody. That's great. Room 217 has a special history. Now, room 217 is the room that mm-hmm. he stayed in. Now, mm-hmm. it has a special history from the beginning. <laughs> During... I hope it's nothing as scary as the movie. Now, uh, the book. I don't think so, no. <laughs> During a major storm in 1911, an explosion occurred while Miss Wilson, the head housekeeper, was lighting lanterns in room 217. The blast sent Elizabeth plummeting through the floor and into the McGregor dining room below. Oh my god. To the surprise of many, Elizabeth survived the ordeal with only broken ankles. And she was also in a coma for seven months, according to some reports. So... Uh, Those (laughs) um, are two pretty different outcomes. Yeah, but she did break... uh, I think she broke both her ankles, but she made a full recovery. She went back to work shortly after recovery and spent the rest of her days living and working at the Stanley. She worked there until the age of 90. And I think she passed... She lived there, too. So she passed away. In the hotel. Sorry. I didn't finish that thought. She's not still alive there. Uh Well... 
It is said that she now spends most of her afterlife tending to the room, as guests have reported pe peculiar occurrences such as moved items, unpacked luggage, and flickering lights. Miss Wilson, who holds traditional views, has been known to create a chilling sensation for unmarried couples who share the bed in the room. Such guests have awoken to find the man's belongings packed and placed by the door. <laughs> <laughs> That's so personal. That's like... She's got some judgments. She's, She's a little judgmental. One person she judged heavily. <laughs> actor Jim Carrey tried to stay in the Notorious Room 217 while filming the movie Dumb and Dumber in 1993. It is reported that the actor only spent a few hours in the room before running out and racing down to the front desk to ask for a different room after he had been quote unquote spooked. Jim Carrey has never officially talked about this story. This is something that they tell at the Overlook. I mean, Stanley. <laughs> He's never talked about it? So he's he never, he's, I don't know if he's ever confirmed it. We know that he stayed there. We know that there's like a scene in Dumb and Dumber where that film filmed at the Stanley. Wow. And we know that they stayed there. Remember they went to Aspen. That was like the thing. I I know it's been so long, but I like when I read this, this synopsis, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. They were heading to Aspen to go find the girl. That wasn't one of my movies. The no. Samsonite. Uh -huh. I remember. No. <laughs> anyway. But I, but the person who that happened to allegedly won't talk about it and, or has never. He's never denied he's it. He's never. Who's asked him? I'm sure people have asked him. I would love to see. He's a pretty, tr he's a pretty open person in interviews. Like he stays away share, from the I'm, press, I, I feel like. I'm not, anything, whoever he is aside. When the person who something like that's happened to does not talk about it again and people use that lack of talking about it as evidence that they must have been so freaked out that's oh i don't that's an absence yeah i don't know of, that's it's quite the opposite i don't know if that's been said like i don't know if it's like he never talks about it so it must be true i don't right. know if that's, said. that's okay it that's might what be it sounds like to me is oh being said could be he doesn't talk about it and it's like well then that's to me an absence of evidence uh, oh, okay. Uh, so do we want to talk about... Well, we got, I think, a couple more rooms to go through here. Mm -hmm. It's not just room 217. Many guests have reported experiencing unexplained occurrences in several of the rooms. Room 401 is considered the spookiest in the hotel, with claims of a malevolent male ghost haunting the space. Women have reported feeling touched inappropriately by an unseen presence while in the room's closet. Additionally, one guest reported their wedding ring being moved and dropping down the drain of a bathroom sink without explanation. So we've got a we got a groper in a in a closet in in the in a room in a in a closet in a room. I don't know it's, if these are walk-in yeah, closets. That's a big, that's a big it closet. must be, yeah. And more than one person said their ring removed. No, so one guest reported. I read this and I was like. This so dumb one guest was like my wedding ring was sitting on the sink and it fell and dropped down the drain okay it's a scientific fact that everything that falls in the toilet or falls in the bathroom lands either in the toilet or in the sink it's it, <laughs> yeah, you I'm know what kidding. no but like <laughs> when i read that i was like yeah that happens that all happens. the time to yeah, everyone that's, that's not a that's not a supernatural <laughs> yeah. thing yeah something weird happened to me in these rooms now maybe and to this guy you know guy or gal's defense maybe it really moved like it was like inches away from the sink mm -hmm. or you know or from the drain or whatever now i'm know? excited to to share with you what my my understanding of what might be going on with some of these uh objects being moved do you want to talk about that now or do you want to continue on with the rest of the yeah, i'd like to hear more okay yeah let's finish this and then we'll yeah. we'll go by we'll go through it point by point Room 407 is another site of paranormal activity, with guests reporting feeling tucked into bed by an invisible force, Aww. or feeling someone sit on the foot of their bed, only to find that no one is there when they turn on the light. Aww. <laughs> it's just tucking the end of bed. How cute. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Ro and then sitting on the end of the bed and watching you sleep. Mm -hmm. Room 428 is haunted by the vision of a cowboy standing in the corner or looming over the bed, despite there being no rooms above it. I don't know why that would be despite. Oh, like it couldn't be a man peeking through a hole in yeah, the ceiling. Yeah, I that guess the cowboy. Creepier than the idea of a ghost. <laughs> now, here's something that's interesting. Some female guests have reported waking up to him kissing them on their foreheads. Guests have also reported hearing strange noises like furniture moving and footsteps coming from the ceiling. Maybe that's what it meant by no, there's no rooms above it. Mm -hmm. Maybe that somehow got moved around. Okay. But anyway. Okay. The female guests who have reported waking up to the cowboy kissing their foreheads reported it to be romantic more than intrusive. Like nobody was like, I like this the cowboy is a friendly 
He's not malevolent like the other guy who pinches he's you. He's tucking you in. He's like blessing you with his forehead kiss. He's a cowboy. Okay. The other guy, I feel like, is like an older male spirit. Uh-huh. Just something to think about while you're while you're thinking of these responses. Like, I don't... I couldn't find anything that was like, yeah, I woke up and this weird cowboy was kissing me on my forehead and that freaked me. You know what I mean? Like that. Okay. Anyway. It's not just the hotel rooms that have paranormal activity. The hotel's on-site pet cemetery, where some of the owner's animals are buried, is said to be haunted by the friendly ghost of a golden retriever named Cassie. Cassie is said to deliver newspapers and search for treats on guests. This hotel has an on-site pet cemetery. There's more. There is a cave system under the hotel that was originally used by the staff to move between rooms and facilities in the early days of the hotel. So kind of like an upstairs-downstairs thing. Okay. Yeah, that's not common in North America, as far as I know. The ghost of a pastry chef is said to haunt the tunnels, leaving behind the scent of baked goods. How <laughs> French. I, like, I don't know. Okay. So, and so... Really, really unusual architecture and unusual features. Everything. And and macabre features. Like I guess. Dark caves and pet cemetery. Yeah. Is a cave dark? Um I mean I'm sorry. I mean, is it not, is it is it like I don't know. Spooky? You, describe, I, you said it called it like an underground. It's cave a ca- system, they call it a cave system, yeah. It could be a, a just a basement a system that could be perfectly well lit. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Maybe it is well lit. According to some hotel tour guides, there is a ghost of a child believed to be the spirit of a young boy who stayed at the hotel with his family many years ago. The boy was said to have autism and would often wander around the hotel on his own. One day, the boy disappeared, and despite an extensive search, he was never found. Some believe that the boy's spirit still roams the hotel to this day, playing with guest's hair as he once did while he was alive. In addition to the ghost of a child with autism, guests on the fourth floor of the Stanley Hotel have reported hearing the sound of children's laughter in the hallways. Even when no children are present, the laughter is said to be most audible late at night when the hotel is quiet and still. When did this kid go missing? I don't know, but you know what? Like, I had a really hard time tracking that story down. I think that's more legend than anything else. It's, where it's it, like, it seems like there's going to be a yeah, lot of that, yeah. Because if a kid like, disappears a, in a hotel, like, the police would be called. That's a cold case. Like, that's, that's, yeah. Yeah. And maybe there, I didn't see any, like, police files uh-huh. on this place. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I need to dive a little that, more into that. Yeah. I have to try not to be reacting to that. Like, this is, this comes up so much in, in like, ghost stories and hauntings. Is this... Children is, go missing? No, just taking what should be something we know about, like an investigated murder or missing person, and turning it into lore that entertains us. Like, oh, how quaint. Like, that's not cool. Yeah. Anyway, that's not, I'm not here to be offended. I'm... It's just sad. (laughs) The hotel has gained worldwide notoriety for its hauntings and has even been featured on popular ghost-themed shows like Ghost Adventures and Ghost Hunters. Just for the record, I love the show Ghost Hunter. or I'm sorry, Ghost Adventures. They're different. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Ghost Hunters is like, they at least try to be somewhat professional. Ghost Adventures is like, they're just bros who are a little roided out, and they go, hey, you know what? (laughs) I'm gonna. I'll go off on ghost hunters later, but like, it doesn't matter. They always run away. It's like, what was that? I don't know. I'm done here, though, man. I'm leaving. They always leave. <laughs> and I, and it's like, I can what? barely get through an episode of How that you... with you because they're like, come at me. Yeah. And like they're they're like they they challenging do the... they do they challenge the ghost uh-huh. and then they get scared when something happens and they run away. Which like, can you imagine if like police investigators were like that? We're like, I don't know, man. This murder thing. Uh, I think I found the guy who did it, and that scares me. <laughs> and I'm scary, leaving. I'm not going yeah. to find that guy. Yeah. Anyway, you, you gotta you gotta stick with it. You can't be scared away. But they call they we, call them invest they call themselves investigators, and I'm like, absolutely not. You're running away. We could do a whole episode on that. We so, will. Yeah. Tourist and the paranormal enthusiast alike flock to the Stanley Hotel to experience its spooky atmosphere and investigate the numerous ghost stories that surround it. Whether or not you believe in the paranormal, the Stanley Hotel is a must-visit destination for anyone interested in the supernatural. So again, that sounds like it's from the uh, Estes Park Tourist Society. Yeah, come on down, (laughs) see our ghosts. That's right. (laughs) So a lot to unpack here. Yeah. The first thing we should talk about, if we want to go back to it, is rooms. So the hauntings of rooms in general, I guess, yeah. and like the the theme of it, right? So you have the 
woman who is disapproving of unmarried couples who messes with the dudes yeah. who stay there. The cowboy. You have the cowboy who kisses the women, mm-hmm. and you have the, the child. old creeper who touches the oh, women, inappropriately talk- touches okay. the women. It's specific people attached to specific rooms right? versus like the people who are seen uh, in various places. Right. Like and the, the boy. Uh, the the children who are like running around or doing the autistic uh-huh. child who does touches things. Touches hair. Yeah. Well, so, and then I'm also hearing themes of sounds throughout yeah. the hotel, mm-hmm. places where people have other places. So not specific specters attached to specific, but like various things have happened in the, in the pet cemetery and the... Well, Cassie. Oh, Cassie the golden is retriever. attached to the pet cemetery. The, okay. But sometimes I feel like that's like some things happen and they just give something a name and just for like the, so the tour guides have something to kind of attach to when they're giving these tours. So yeah. they're like, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's just Cassie instead of just saying, oh, that's just one of the ghosts of oh, the pets. Of course. You know? I mean, yeah. that that's so to me, there's an entire piece of this that's this is a business. Right. That is relying upon it being a haunted place. And people coming there for that reason. So these stories get retold for for that purpose. Yes. There's a lot to be said for priming. What we would, like, if you know going in. Right. If you know these stories going in. And this right. is what, you know, these the ghost hunters often try to say. They know nothing about a place before they go. But you, how do you remove what you've heard? Oh, no. They do definitely do research. Before they go. Okay. They, they'll do like a synopsis yeah. as they're driving to do one of those scenes, you know, driving yeah. in the car. Like, okay, guys, here we go. We're going to all head to the Stanley Hotel. And there's this and there's that. So, yeah, there's this old lady in room 217 uh-huh. and there's this thing happening over here and there's Cassie the dog. Uh-huh. And they're looking for it. And so they're primed. Yeah. And so that which we... I wonder if they yell at the dog. Anyway, sorry. Go <laughs> gotta watch, I gotta go back and watch that. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then so that's a particular intention to yeah. for the for the ghost hunters. But then there are the guests of the hotel who want to experience the paranormal. And you know, you you might have experienced that, or I, you know, I've gone to a place that oh, there are ghosts. It's, it's haunted, so you kind of already have that creepy feeling, and you're looking for it. What priming can do to our our perception is really powerful because it it can put you, especially if it's priming for a particular experience of your sensory perception of a ghost, you're going to feel things that you might not otherwise even notice, like your hair moving or something touching you that that may not, in fact, be there. Right. So that's I, why you're already on edge. You're already like, and so there's a tingly sensation that, you know. So I've never had that experience. Like, I've definitely mm-hmm. been like, oh, cool. It's like haunted. We're going to see ghosts. And then I never get any funky you sensation. Never had a, what was that? No. Not even like... Even it doesn't have to be priming for ghosts. Like there are ghosts here. It can be we're going camping and people associate camping in a tent with spooky things can happen. Not spooky, but like uh-huh. bears. Like yeah, what was just, is that a bear? Okay, and then then therein lies the <laughs> why do we feel that? Because it's a, okay. to our evolutionary advantage to be alert at night in the dark or in places where there could be unexpected things happening or where you can't see and hear very well. But so. if I'm staying at a resort. Mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not going to feel that. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, well, that's Like, you. even if it's a haunted resort. Sure. Okay. Well, that's... No, 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 I understand. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I can't, like, I, I want to feel that way. Uh-huh. I do. I just don't. Okay. Yeah. Well. But I, I totally get it, because I think that's how a lot of these ghost hunters slash yeah. paranormal investigators, quote unquote, that's what they do. They, like, they get these ideas in their head, mm-hmm. and they spin themselves up. Yeah. And that's one of their, like, sometimes you'll even see that's, that's. They'll be like, look at look, I have goosebumps. Yes. See? Isn't that crazy? I have goosebumps. Yeah. And it's like, no, no you're, you're freaked you're out, nervous. man. Like exactly. Yeah. And then they're okay. And so what you're also highlighting is we're hearing these stories again and again and again from mm-hmm. the guests who report them. What about the hundreds of guests who didn't experience these things? And that's right. the there's a name for that. No, we can cut that in if you want me to look up the name of that. Um and it isn't about like well, that's an absence of evidence. That's actually many many observations of what the hotel is typically like and then there are these anomalies of the people who say this did happen so i'd be curious to know of the hundreds of guests who do come on these ghost tours how many do experience these things and priming is a huge possible explanation for them being quote witness to something they already heard about i almost guarantee that i would be one of the people who would not have an experience at this hotel well sure yeah, and because you you're not primed in the same way, you're not believing it already going in. But what would what would you say to somebody who was like, 
Well, that's just because you're not in tune enough or sure. you block it off or... So, and that's where, like, if we're talking about the Stanley Hotel, mm-hmm. which I think a lot of this would would come down to, this is a place that has an incredible amount of notoriety, an incredible amount of priming, an incredible amount of repeat storytelling and people who want to believe and want to be in on it because it's cool and it's famous. Then we're talking about versus the question of are there ghosts and are these ghosts human entities that have passed away? And like, that's obviously not a question that science can answer because we don't have the tools to assess it. So is it possible that, you know, that there are other realms and spirits? I mean, we're not here to really answer that question as much as to give plausible explanations for the perceptions right. of these Absolutely. experiences. So we've got the people, the repeated types of people in the room. Yeah. I'm. My thought is you, you would have to see how many of these people had already heard about that particular entity before they stayed in that room. So, And I'm, I'm sure most of them do because I think even... <laughs> If you go on to book the room, like if you go to it book room 217, it's, named, the, it's the Stephen it's King the cowboy suite. room. Or the, yeah, the cowboy room. <laughs> uh-huh. That's right. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. For me, what's the physical, like women who are being touched inappropriately? Like what's that, what's that mechanism? It's, what's a possible mechanism for them feeling that? Sure. Um, Other than men are terrible and the world is a nightmare. Yeah. Well, that may be part of the priming. Like honestly, <laughs> okay. like that we are on you know potentially on edge for that or if you if you if you are thinking about the realm of fear right what are we afraid of we're afraid of ghosts where as women we're also afraid of being assaulted these things overlap in our brains we can't differentiate a saber-toothed tiger from a car accident our body reacts the exact same way and i think that may be part of if you're going to a place that may be haunted and then it activates all the fear kind of schema in your brain that it could be this is the nature of the haunting that a person experiences who is a woman or who is in a culture of a lot of those things happening another piece can also be as i said as you said the goosebumps the feeling of being sensory primed not just cognitively perceptual but like our our sense of touch and our body to be like oh what was that if you walk into a closet and a robe brushes up against you that's a small space that is the place you are most likely to bump into something (laughs) right so if you're already on edge and then you walk into a closet and you bump into an object you oh what was that I, I think that that because okay yeah it's places where small spaces dark spaces um you're you're already sensitive parts of your body so when you say the dog is sniffing people's crotch um, i didn't say that <laughs> did you I say said that butts, butts. <laughs> <laughs> looking for treats is what you said but yeah. where do people look for treats <laughs> i don't know in their like pockets. in their pockets so like right, their right. pockets are moving or whatever i mean right. i think that that's an interesting that that are the parts of ourselves that we protect the most we're also maybe going to um perceive inappropriate touch because we're, we're on edge beds being made or people being tucked in yeah while they're sleeping yeah well to me then the context becomes again dark at the nighttime sleep our guards are up our wits are not their sharpest and so and also our imaginations as i said even with dreams can be highly active mm. and so uh, this is where we can all we might say freak ourselves out lying in bed at night things go bump in the night and again to me it's priming of the story goes that someone will tuck you in okay i felt that i felt did you feel that you know you're sleeping in an unfamiliar bed where the sheets the blankets the way things are tucked in could be unfamiliar i hate the way hotels are so tightly tucked yeah i don't know it bothers me so much anyway (laughs) these are these are all plausible i would jump up and yell at the ghost if they were like i'd be like bro I just untucked. Untucked these crazy. These tight ass, like, <laughs> what are you doing? Anyway, yeah, I would be, I understand you're trying to help. Yeah. I understand yeah. it. Just yeah. go Don't find you... something else to do with the afterlife. Like, stop tucking people in their beds. <laughs> um, sitting on the end of the bed. These common things. I feel like that's the same, like, sensation almost. Like, you feel the bed tightening around. Yes. You, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 You get into a, t- a really tightly tucked hotel bed. That could be part of that, too uh the children specifically the yeah. autistic children like that like and you're right i couldn't find the story on how long ago that happened it's just i think it's at this point it's, it's just a legend yeah so first of all well, if, not to, if any child goes missing in a hotel again 
cops are going to be involved and i'm I'm, even back in the 50s and 60s i would think like cops would be involved like there would be a a hunt for the child and they said an extensive search i don't know what that means like i guess we have to go on this ghost tour and actually kind of figure it out and maybe we will yeah maybe we'll do an episode where we go to the stanley hotel but that would be great because then everything that we will obviously go out the window when you and i both get haunted somewhere (laughs) right we'll delete this entire the entire part no hiss no evidence just like jim carrey I found it really interesting as you describe these entities that the descriptions are so specific and idiosyncratic, like cowboy and autistic child um, is very different from what you often hear is like the lady in white or, um, you know, something that's coming okay. with the photographic inc- uh, evidence. Okay. And so uh, that to me speaks maybe more to uh, lore and storytelling and that maybe the hotel folks just know like the more specific you can be and, and unique, um, the more appealing that will be to people. Uh, oh, I saw the cowboy. Um, the, and then the autistic piece is also, gosh, it wouldn't. It, I would really like to know when that allegedly happened because children weren't even given the label of autism, as far as I know, in the nineteen early nineteen hundreds. That that label wasn't commonly used. It would have been um, mental retardation, an older older term, right. general term, if anything, even. So that's really interesting to me, and that may just be a convenient then way to explain the theme of oh it it would be if your hair if your hair gets grazed then it was the then it was the kid who did that so that any again really pretty mundane physical sensation right. like you brush your sensitive most sensitive parts of your body like the hair on your skin your privates your breasts your hair that you can feel move there's a very particular explanation for that okay you know that th- no. so yeah Phantom smells like baked goods. Yeah, phantom smells. So when you said smells um, and like water running through the pipes, uh, like or water water running, um, that was the laughing story. sounds. Yeah, that was yeah. the Stephen King story. I but these are it's an old building. Oh, like an old building. Pipe, yeah. goes that to me. An old building. When he was asleep, he probably heard someone flush the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Even though he was the only one yeah. staying in the hotel. Yeah. The toilet um, might have flushed itself. It. Yeah, and and does this hotel have a have a kitchen yeah does it have it's room got a, service yeah it's got a it's got a whole bar yeah. and that's where stephen king and yeah. his wife ate yeah you can at two in the morning staying in a hotel smell ketchup every now and then because yeah. someone down the hall ordered french fries right and then put their tray out in the hallway this is this was in the cave specifically remember yeah. that's where the pastry chef hangs out <laughs> um, <clears throat> i have a theory they, about that did they we'll... have an uh, then i'm going to how old is this hotel did they also have a did they store store things down there like anything for burning like wood or coal or anything that would have I'm that sure i'm sure um, but my hard smells i mean this isn't psychology this is just no but i was i was asking you for a yeah. psychology thing because my my guess is that first of all caves are, are very stable temperature they're mm-hmm. usually between 60 and 70 degrees depending okay. on the time of year or 55 and, and 70 degrees depending on the time of year people would often especially back in the ni- early 1900s would often brew beer brew wine that kind of thing that puts yeast in the caves and yeast in the air uh-huh. um and yeast can survive for years and years yeah. and years in a yeah. dormant state um especially think about prohibition like they probably were making their own hooch you know yeah and, and that probably was going on down there yeah, especially um, maybe if it they was were... one of the few places around that had this underground system. Yeah, at, in the Prohibition era, That's and maybe a... they were storing mm-hmm. goods down there at some point, mm-hmm. even just like normal dry and 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 goods that needed to be refrigerated down there. So like. Yeah. The yeast, again, for me, like I'm just, uh, I was a home brewer for a really long mm-hmm. time. And, and that's not surprising to me that the smell of yeast would be, because I've been in many caves, actually. Mm-hmm. Like when you go to some of the places in Napa Valley or you go to, you know, some of the breweries, yeah. the, the, oh, yingling, or the Yingling Brewery. The yingling brewery the, they yeah, they cave. don't brew down yeah. there anymore. No, but they, but they did. did. And it still smells and like still, beer. It really yeah. Does, yeah. But of course, the whole place smells like beer. It smells yeasty, too. Yeah. I mean, I'm obviously now you've, now I'm going to. Right. But anyway, I was just wondering if there's like a psychological explanation for smelling things other you know that aren't there other than maybe having a stroke <laughs> yeah well um smelling things that aren't there olfactory hallucinations but that would be and that's actually fairly common as as hallucinations go uh really yeah okay. that is one of the more common and we don't often do think about uh, auditory hallucinations but olfactory are really common really really common but i don't and i don't know enough about like can olfactory hallucinations be primed? That's that's an empirical question. I don't know. 
Hmm. Yeah. Like uh-huh. grind on a mass scale where like right, the, right. many people will experience the you same thing. You tell them like, do you smell baked bread? I smell it. It must be the pastry chef. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Maybe. Objects moving. So I love this one. I love this one because um, it's probably, probably one of the most common parts of ghost story lore as like objects were moved. And so that's a pretty big leap to me that it's a supernatural entity moving an object because physical objects move. That's what they do when people move them. <laughs> when acted upon by when an outside force. When acted upon by an outside force, yeah. which could be a person moving or a door or, or old building. Things, they, surfaces are not level. You can roll a ball in, a, in an old building and you'll see evidence of that. So another piece is, and this, this is more of the what uh, the uh, people who actually specialize in paranormal research um like i think his name is chris french and um at university of london i think he's really interesting and he looked at attentional blindness as being a really common um a more likely explanation for objects moving okay and this is the like misplacing of things or forgetting that something was packed Mm -hmm. um that so the guy packed his bags. He packed his bag and forgot he put it, it. Put it out there. And then yeah. he was like, oh, the lady did it. Because yeah. he was drunk because he was drinking in the bar. Sure. And, the, <laughs> and yeah, and vacations are also a place where we're not routine or habit. And we're under, we're, we're doing things out of the ordinary. Uh, we're also stressed or f- afraid. And so our attention isn't going to be that consistent or reliable. But attentional blindness is really interesting because it's also kind of a characteristic quality. Like that some people have more than others. So... Do you remember the uh, really widely shared experimental video of the um, dancing gorilla, the basketball game? Oh, yeah. Okay. Of course. So that's the classic study of attentional yeah. blindness where you're told to watch this video. How many times they pass how the many, ball. Yeah, the yeah. white t-shirt team and the black t-shirt team, how many times, pay attention to how many times and count when they pa- when the white team passes the ball to each other. Meanwhile, you watch through the video, then a halfway through, a, a man in a gorilla costume walks in, right into the middle of the room and starts dancing or doing something and then walks out and i'll put a link to that in the in the show please notes. do because yeah. it really is such an excellent demonstration of attentional blindness now everyone who's listening is going to be primed to see it so it's not going to work on you sorry but it, it so there those of us who i don't love that it's called attentional blindness because i'm a person who missed the gorilla because i folk you know you're focusing yeah you're focusing your attention on the task at hand and you might have people who have really great sustained attention then you might have other people who who would get it so you might call that attentional blindness that i'm not i'm not spanning scanning the whole space yeah um i'm doing the task at hand i'm sustaining my attention on the people in the white shirt um but then you then you have people who are who might get their attention distracted by the man in the gorilla costume and who are going to miss it and they quote yeah they fail the task (laughs) but they're like uh hello they actually pass the yeah the real test the real test which is this thing happened that you you didn't notice and when you ask people afterward oh did you see the gorilla they're like no way you know and you gotta go back and watch it yeah yeah, and there's a there's a similar one where and i think that's where if sorry no there's a tell me about the similar one there's a similar one uh, experiment where they have several people walk into a library and ask for a form, and the guy goes, "Oh, hold on, let me get it." And he ducks behind the it's counter, a, uh-huh. and another person pops person up that kind of looks the same, but not really. It's like, incredible. There, and you, yeah. people just don't pay it; they don't know. Yeah, there there's, there's like one or two people out of ten that like, uh, "You're not the same guy I was just yeah. talking to." They escalate. It's their, amazing. Yeah, anyway, there are sorry. a series of experiments on this where it's just a yeah. completely different person. Oh, it's 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 amazing. And again, I think that what we're talking about then is, oh, no, there's no, there, what are you talking, there was no gorilla. And yeah. being like, no, I didn't pack my stuff. I yeah. didn't do that. No way. And that insistence upon it was moved or someone else did that, combined with the fact that you're primed to believe that hauntings are happening in the hotel that you're in. Yeah. I, I lose things so much that I just don't. I don't even blame, I don't blame anybody but myself. If I'm like, oh, I thought I put that there. I'm not like, that was a ghost. I'm like, I was an idiot and put it somewhere else. Or I forgot where I put it or whatever. Like it's. Yeah. Well, um, what I think is interesting about Chris French's research, I think he, gosh, I hope it's Chris. um, He, Dr. French, give him the respect. He, I think he did uh, just some associative research where they asked, they did the attentional blindness experiment component and then they um asked people about their belief in the paranormal and they're associated or people and people or people who had said that they had experienced paranormal activity or 
things you know mysteriously moving um, that they attribute to paranormal pieces. So this is a characteristic piece that might follow yep. across situations. Christopher French, you're right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we hit, is there anything else that I missed that you wanted to hit on? Because we're about to jump into photographic and also EVP evidence. Oh, this is, I want to see. Oh, okay. What you got? Let me show you what I got. Okay. This is really funny because these are so close together as far as like when these images were taken. So this is posted on Instagram by user area4415. He says, by golly, I think I may have captured a hashtag ghost at hashtag Stanley Hotel, hashtag Estes Park. <laughs> so this wasn't that long ago. This was 2016, 2017. And if you look, it's a it's a panoramic photo. So you actually see like the entire lobby area. And mm -hmm. he claims he didn't see anybody like he there wasn't anybody standing there. And he didn't notice it until he checked his camera later. OK, I mean, there's definitely someone standing on the staircase yeah yeah it's very it's pretty well lit it's a little grainy but it's, it's super grainy um yeah. but go almost, ahead almost you... looks like a person wearing like a nun's habit or that's another freaky thing about it yeah it's like they're wearing black with like a very stark white collar like right a... it's very old it looks like they're wearing very old timey clothes if anybody's actually there yeah also sometimes i wonder if like the hotel staff isn't doesn't have people walking around like that sometimes it's just like uh -huh. trying to uh -huh. Trying to perpetuate the the myth, right? Uh -huh. Trying to get more people in. Yeah, it's so difficult with this because this is a person saying, I've captured an image of a ghost when it's like, did you have attentional blindness and not notice that there was someone standing there when you took a photo? Did you know there was someone standing there and you're just claiming that there wasn't? <laughs> right. Um, so that's what, you know, what we would call hoax. Not all hoaxes are intentional, right? Right. There's... there's Okay, it's witting a and unwitting hoaxes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what, what I also see, I mean, you can't see their face. You really cannot tell if it's if there's anything unusual about the person in any way. I don't know. It's Other only, than it's you not can't a see their face. Yeah, it's definitely not a cowboy. It's not a child. This is where the lady in white thing comes through, and and there's actually some more pictures on this staircase, I believe. Of. Of ghosts. This particular... No, okay. no, totally different. Okay. Well, I don't know. Maybe maybe they, maybe the ghost changed clothes. Do we know how tall? Like, can you estimate how tall this person would be? Five feet. <laughs> no, no, I can't. I mean, I have could, no did idea. They, does anyone have any... Okay. I, you know, the angle that it's... I, mm -hmm. It's it's probably really hard to do. Yeah. Did And then did the hotel come in and say, oh, that's the... Oh, I'm sure the hotel totally mm -hmm. buys into it. And it's like, yep, there's a ghost. You got one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That's a good one. All right, another one, and this one I uh, freaking hate. <laughs> you hate this one. Not very open-minded. No, but this one's just like, come on, man. Sorry if you guys can hear my clicking. All right, apparently there's a ghost right there. Oh, it's so far away. So what we're seeing is a picture from outside of the hotel bright bright daylight we can see four stories um and there's a person in the front the foreground but in the background we can see the top floor windows in the distance and you're telling me there's a ghost in one of those windows I zoom in on this one okay oh and unfortunately when you zoom in it doesn't get clearer not at all <laughs> and so here's another thing that they try to do to prove that it wasn't staged or nobody's trying to fake it or whatever they say that the photo, this is the original photo, was taken at 3.35, and the next photo over was taken at 3.37, so only a few minutes after. Tell me if you notice any the other differences between these two pictures. The windows are a different... Yep. So the, one of the other... This is pretty... Uh, it's pretty clear obvious. That this yeah. is a very different time, or someone went around move, opening and closing a lot of windows. Mm -hmm. That one's open now, that one's open now. So either they're lying about the time difference. Yeah. Or there was probably probably a hotel staff member who was opening the window because mm -hmm. it's open in this one yeah. two minutes later. Yeah. And this one next to it is half half open as yeah. well. So someone was cleaning a room. <laughs> That's right. I mean, is that and that would be my question is what goes on in these rooms? Why why would we believe that it has to be a ghost just because there's someone in a window? Right. That that's a, that's never are these are these boarded up rooms and no one's been in there for a hundred years. And I can't yeah. even like you can't even tell if it's a person and it's such a terrible picture. yeah anyway this made national news this was on well it's yeah 
The main national news. Yeah. Someone caught CNN. Him. Yeah. So that not that such an interesting thing that, that we're looking for pictures of ghosts? That's kind of the idea of being like, that's perhaps the wrong thing to be looking for. Um, what should we be looking for? Well, as you talked to, we talked about before, you know, pictures and videos are, fa- are fabrications of reality already. Mm-hmm. So they're not going to be the evidence that we need. So if you ask what would be the evidence that we need for the cowboy, for example, it would be, I suppose it would be that you can get an interview with him and then the next day someone can get an interview with him. <laughs> These are not, fir- they're not tangible objects they're ethereal (laughs) so why would you need a picture of it to prove that it's as if it were tangible i still don't if you can't see them no that's all you can do is see them that's all you can do is see them and feel them kissing you (laughs) right and hear them i'm sorry you can hear them too Uh uh-huh so you'd have a conversation Mm -hmm. okay well i just showed you two here's a third one (laughs) this is possibly the best one i've seen but i can still explain it away not explain it away but i can still come up with a better explanation than ghost what i mean by repeat observations is of the same phenomenon so that right. same person at that on that staircase or in that in that you know there you go that's a cool image so it we're looking at the uh, people in a gathered in a platform in a st- staircase what is that called a that's the same staircase okay that, yeah, that lady remember so lobby that's, mm-hmm. that yep that's the first one we saw yeah and so this is like on the the Someone's up on the third, f- on the, second or third floor. Yeah. yeah, and there's there are several people standing around. Tour group. Okay, and uh, yeah, the name tags, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and there looks to be at the at coming up the stairs, perhaps a very blurry person. <laughs> I would say you could probably venture a guess a little girl in a nightgown. It's like yeah, you see maybe perhaps. The image of dark hair and white you gown. You get dark hair? I get blonde. Well, hair that's darker than the blonde. Than okay. The, than the you white. see hair. You see, Got ha- it. like, long shoulder length hair, yeah. And they look a little transparent. Like, you can't see part of the... You can see the carpet behind them in parts. But it also, you see light flare. Len- there's lens, lens flare, flare everywhere in this picture. Yeah. 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 At, at, like, multiple spots where all of the lights are. It's and there's blurriness too, which is really weird for a well lit. It's a very well lit picture. Uh-huh. I feel like they had like night, some kind of they had uh, the wrong like a setting, like a night filter on or yeah. something like that. There's one man who, yeah, it's like uh, the exposure, the the lens, um, what's it called, the aperture mm-hmm. uh, speed. Yeah, you can tell there's a guy right here who's like super blurry, probably because he's moving around. Yeah, a couple of people. There's a little kid over there who's super blurry. This person's arm is blurry, but the rest of her is kind of okay. And then kind of standing here. So apparently and there we were no... do know what kind of camera this was? Oh, uh, that's a good question. I feel like a, a, a photo expert, a photographer, would be able to... This has been sent to an expert who has said that nothing has been tampered with it. Um, it's How really hard to... know t- by seeing the image? Uh, no, no, no. Because you can analyze the file itself okay. to see if anybody's looks, done any Photoshop uh, or anything like that. So this has not been Photoshopped. I think it's just kind of like point-in-time camera error. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, it doesn't mean it has been tampered with. It can just be... The settings on an SLR camera, right, or or even just a because you can you can change the you can you can mock SLR settings mm-hmm. on most modern phones. Mm-hmm. Now again, this is 2017, uh, but still you yeah. can you can still. So it's a really cool picture. I think it's pretty decent actually, as far as like if you because it, it's definitely human standing there, right? There's, yeah, that's definitely like not I don't know, um, you know, just blurriness or anything like you know a smudge that looks like Jesus. This looks like a little girl in a nightgown standing there. Well, and, and yeah. she's got slippers. You can, that's that's pretty clear. You can kind of tell she's got slippers on because her heels coming out of the bottom of her shoe. Mm-hmm. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. So she's got slippers on, and, and you almost tell looks me like that's she's what got. Like, I'm supposed to be seeing. Well, <laughs> what does it look like? She's got like a teddy bear in her hand too. I have no idea. I, what okay. I see is the carpet through it. So ah, I, like okay. she would have been taking a step, and so there was motion happening. Right. And yeah, I think. And again, I, I'm not a photographer or an expert on this, but what I imagine is you see the fuzziness of the person to the, their left, and a little bit to the right and a little bit here like anyone standing here would have been completely blurry anyone in that middle part of the photo right so it's just a really neat neat settings it does look like an action shot you know what, what do if they call you look slow... in mm-hmm. the mirror look at there there's a girl wearing a white dress that so i mirror wonder would be this way though. yeah so she ran mm-hmm. that way and finally got there and by the time the exposure in between the the exposure time she was running oh perhaps yeah 
So there she is. <laughs> yeah, running to her dad over in the tour group. <laughs> yeah. So you'll share this image too. I'll share this. Image I mean, so I think it's it. it's cool. On to EVPs. Oh boy. Ready? Okay. <laughs> okay. EVPs for me are very questionable yeah. as far as evidence of anything other than malfunctioning electronics. And that's way more your domain being that it's electronic. But I want to play them for you because I want you to tell me what you hear. Like if you can hear it. Because especially with EVPs, people were like, did you hear it? They said, help me. And I'm like, no, that sounded like somebody like rubbing their foot on mm-hmm. the ground. You know what I mean? Like I can't tell. Mm-hmm. So hold on. Make sure that this is all set up. This first one is from YouTube user One Moto Girl, and in it they say, We were doing an EVP session in this room, 400, at the Stanley Hotel. This EVP was only captured on my digital recorder, but the session was also being video recorded by my friend's cell phone. She did not capture the voice, but we were able to debunk that no one was seeing at that time. I hate it when people use debunk wrong and they do it all the time. Mm-hmm. Anyway, here we go. Did you hear anything? At the end there? Apparently someone was singing. It's hard to tell because they're playing the song in the background. Let me play it again. I didn't hear it. I kind of heard like a mumbling in the background, but it sounds like there's multiple people like, there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the only Also, thing. sometimes things just record and they sound like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you didn't hear anything either. Good. So th- tell me again about that. They were, this was at the... The at the Stanley in room 400, they 400. were playing, singing in the rain in the background. And I think it just says that you hear somebody singing. Mm-hmm. No. And sometimes people will just post things to YouTube and be like, let me know if you hear anything because I don't. <laughs> That's not here, though. <laughs> They're actually saying they heard something. Okay. Good. I didn't hear anything either. Here we go. This is from another user, uh, Sienna Lane. She stayed at the Stanley Hotel three years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and she did like a whole session and she like went around to different rooms and she she was really thorough about it uh, she says she hears things I don't know if I hear them I'll, I'll play it for you and see what you hear what were their names? did you hear that? That sound that sounded like people talking. Yeah. Go back again. Yeah. So I don't know that we're analyzing audio. I'm just wondering if you were hearing No no no. And I'm just wondering yeah. if you're hearing everything if you're hearing a human voice or not. I don't I don't sure. Sure if you tell me, <laughs> but it's just an audio recording. I don't know what okay. I, what And is. her mom speaks in there and anyway. Like, you can hear, like, a a very soft female voice that apparently nobody's speaking, and Uh her mom speaks over Mm -hmm. it, and then the other voice speaks again. Yeah. That's neat. I I don't, I don't, it's all, it's your domain with the using electronics, using, using images, using sound, using video, because. Yeah. So. Because it's, if it's supposed to be an entity that chooses to reveal itself in whatever way that it wants to, when it wants to, I don't know how that would be proof. When going back and doing some editing on our podcast, mm-hmm. I hear noises sometimes. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. what is that? Yeah. And it's a crate, you know, when I recently I did it and I was like, what? When I started talking about this one ghost or this one entity, all of a sudden I hear this, this noise. Yeah. And it's our cat purring. Mm-hmm. That's, these are incredibly sensitive things. So real quick, real quick lesson here. And super rudimentary electronic theory when an electron passes through a conduit like wire an electromagnetic field is created when some kind of magnetic field passes over a wire an electron starts moving through the wire right so that's how generators work that's also how microphones work when i'm talking to you right now the sound is hitting a little diaphragm within the 
microphone itself that is surrounded by other wires that is capturing, that is basically those electrons are, are then translated from analog signals into digital signals, all that kind of stuff. Anywhere in between any one of the, we still quite don't quite understand how magnetism works on a very, on a, in a very, on the lowest level. We utilize these technologies on a daily basis without truly understanding what's going on at the bottom, or at, at, at the very core of what's going on, because we don't really understand quantum mechanics, right? We might understand it on the atomic level, we might understand it on, on the electrical level, whatever, on like the kind of higher higher end levels. But there are so many things that we don't understand about what's actually going on uh, on the on the deepest level of understanding that we can, right? Um. So that's my that's one of my biggest problems with EVP is, is that it's like it's possible that there is a radio station that's strong enough that is interfering an AM radio station or FM radio station. It's possible that the hotel staff has radios that they use. And again, these are all really sensitive things. Um, it's possible that you're rubbing your shoe across the surface mm -hmm. and you rub rubber across the surface. It makes a noise. Can sometimes sound like a human voice if you record it. <laughs> you, know, you rub it the right way. Mm -hmm. It's like nobody was talking. No, but you were moving. Mm -hmm. Your stomach was growling. Mm -hmm. You have. We all have bodily functions that happen, right? Mm -hmm. No, you burped. You farted. Like whatever it is. Like I just feel like there's so much of that that happens when people say that they hear uh, an EVP. Yeah. Now I have actually seen, uh, and I wish I could remember the show. It's one of the Ghost Hunter shows where they took an EVP to a an audio analyst, like somebody who, uh, I don't know if they, like where they are on the academic scale, whether they have a PhD or not, but they actually, they, they do audio recordings of human voices for a living. Yeah. And they heard an EVP and they were like, that is a human voice. And they looked at the waveform and they were like, that's a human voice. Well, that's, that's the biggest criticism I'm gathering in my minimal review of EVP for us to do a whole episode is that very few of these samples have actually been analyzed by people who are trained speech pathologists or auditory specialists who know how to f what a human voice sounds like and looks like on wave files or whatever the minimal experience i've had with analyzing sound samples as yeah i had worked i worked in an auditory lab once as an undergrad but the, people don't these people listen they just listen with right. the naked ear and that yeah. again is is subject to all of the biases of our auditory processing, which as you, is is just like any other sense. What we see, what we hear, what we think, what we feel. I don't say think as if it's a sense, but that is the part that is actually priming our entire brain or, or um, causing us to say that we, we hear human voices because we want to. And on that note, which is a beautiful note, I want to play one more video for you. A video? This is not a ghost. It is at the Stanley Hotel and it begs questions. <laughs> That's a bear. There's a bear in the lobby. <laughs> a big brown grizzly bear. It, it looks terrifying to me. How did it get in there? Is it that is 100% a wild brown bear that wow. got into the lobby of the Stanley Hotel recently? And the, one of the staff staff who was at the front desk that at that time took the video. Uh huh. And Why so, can't they take video <clears throat> of the ghosts? <laughs> no, no. My point here is that. Another thing about hearing steps and hearing things scratching, mm -hmm. hearing knocking. Yeah. We take for granted like what our walls are. Yeah. All the time. And right. we also don't really think about what's behind them or necessarily what's not behind them. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. Um, if a brown bear can get into the lobby of this hotel, <laughs> there's probably rats. There's oh probably raccoons yes. and squirrels yes. and the attic and yes. mice and oh, there's it's everything. It's not just an old building. It's an old building in the middle of the Rockies, the wild. Yeah, in the middle of America. That's yeah. So I just wanted to play that for you because I wanted to kind of tie beautiful. this up and mm -hmm. say if you think you're hearing something bump in the night, yeah. and you're hearing scratching, yeah. or you're hearing, call a roofer. Uh -huh. call a, a drywall professional, have right. them come right. and look and see what's going on in your house. Don't just assume it's ghosts yes. and that you're haunted and start spinning up about that. Yeah. Because then when you do, guess what? Then you might be haunted and not in the paranormal sense. You're yeah. just going to be a haunted person. Exactly. And which I think, I think that happens that's a lot. so much of what we're talking about is like, yeah. that here's what's going on when you, when your brain goes to it's paranormal versus, yeah. well, what else is it? It actually, it's probably something... Yeah. Pretty and, mundane, but potentially really dangerous. And I think that that's just what our brain knows is that it could be really scary. 
Right. Mm -hmm. And we love talking about the paranormal. I love talking about the paranormal. I love watching the videos. I love, you know, looking at these things. I don't know why, (laughs) even though I don't buy into a lot of it. But I'm starting to see somewhat of a trend go in the wrong direction with it, where it's like, well, this person says this about it. And it's Mm -hmm. like, okay, who is that person? We have a lot of people in the quote unquote paranormal community who claim to be investigators, who claim to be um, AV experts, who claim to, you know, have all this background. Mm -hmm. Um, There is no background in this stuff. The the literal definition of paranormal is is that it's not normal. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's not anything that's necessarily, that necessarily can be explained Mm -hmm. or or, or any of that stuff. So it's really important to kind of like remember that when we're looking at these things. Yeah. And to make sure that we are being objective about it. Not to say that there's not something otherworldly going on here. Yeah. Interdimensional beings, um, possibly afterlife stuff. Like, I'm not saying that that's not possible. Right. But again, for us, it's always about what's more probable. Right. And we're not here to, to answer the question of whether there are ghosts or paranormal entities, period. Just what's what what else might be going on that you can explain. Right. Mm-hmm. And with that... Mm. That's it. That's the <laughs> well, end. Yeah, I'm um, happy to, to talk more about EVPs another time when I oh, yeah. share with you. And maybe go back to the one where where a, an expert in analyzing audio samples said that it's a human voice. So I'll talk more about that one. Yeah, I got to go back and find that yeah. one. I'll try you, to find you send it. me that one and then I'll bring the rest to you. Okay, All And right. I'll tell you some stories. We're going to have an on a hosted episode. It's mm-hmm. going to be good. If you guys out there... And gals mm-hmm. out there can think of anything that you want us to talk about, investigate. If you have uh, an experience at the Stanley Hotel, please feel free to reach out to us at stories at paranormal outsiders dot com. Mm-hmm. Stories at paranormal yeah. outsiders. Send us your stories. Com. Send us your requests for topics. Your thoughts. Mm-hmm. Your feelings mm-hmm. about paranormal stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm sure the other thoughts and feelings are important too, but that's, you know. Paranormal stuff, the psychology of it all, the electronics of it all, Mm -hmm. (laughs) the technology of it all, and we'll keep talking. Send it our way. Thanks for listening, everyone. Mm